Okay, let's discuss why it is that it's so important that we slowly cool the crystallization mixtures because this is a very important part of the procedure. And to uh, explore this concept, we're going to ask the following question. Why is slow cooling so important during crystallization? Why is it that if we cool quickly, we can expect our melting point data, our sample purity, everything else to be completely flawed and not acceptable? To do this, we're going to have a few characters we have to think about. First, the molecule of our product, which is we're going to be represented by green squares. And then also, a particular impurity, which I'm going to put in here as red triangles. So let's take a look at why it is that we have to cool a recrystallization sample so slowly. The first step in any recrystallization experiment or procedure is to disassemble the crystal by dissolving it. At the molecular level, we've got to take this whole thing down. We do this by placing the crystal under solvent and then warming it until it dissolves. So let's go ahead and dissolve this, disassembling it at the molecular level. So our crystal with the red impurity is going to be taken apart completely. Now the entire constitution of the crystal is dissolved in solution. Our next attempt is going to be to rebuild that crystal in such a way that only the compounds of interest are included in the new crystal. In order to do this, we cool the sample slowly. I've shown here the surface of a crystal which is already growing, so we're already cooling the sample down. Let's watch what happens when we cool the sample slowly. And just a few molecules at a time come in very slowly and find the best possible orientation to maximize intermolecular forces until an impurity docks. And that impurity would cause a problem, but as intermolecular forces are so weak, it falls off before a new molecule comes in to fill the void. And so you can see by slowly cooling, we end up with a crystal which is very highly ordered and therefore is expected to have a relatively high melting point and be of a very high purity. On the other hand, if we cool too rapidly, and we have the surface of a growing crystal again depicted by the array of green squares at the bottom of the slide, let's watch what happens. We're going to cool the sample very quickly, and the surface is growing so rapidly that when this impurity docks, we're going to pause this for a moment, it takes too long for that impurity to fall off. Those weak intermolecular forces hold it there long enough for it to be encapsulated. And once this happens, there's no going back. We can't remove the impurity anymore. It's entombed within the growing crystal, and we're right back where we started. This is why cooling slowly is so very important during a recrystallization experiment.